Hello, today's lesson is going to be lesson 3.6. We're going to be working with rational numbers in word problems. So let's get started. Okay, as I said, we are going to be talking about using rational numbers in word problems. And our objectives are I can read or I can check the reasonableness of my answers. I can use rational numbers in any form and I can solve problems with my toolbox, meaning strategies to solve word problems. And this will be standard EE3, solve multi-step real life and mathematical problems posed with positive and negative rational numbers in any form. So we can do whole numbers, fractions, decimals, any of those types. Using tools strategically, meaning using steps. Apply properties of operations to calculate with numbers in any form, convert between forms as appropriate, depending on the word problem, and assess the reason reasonableness of answers using mental computation and estimation strategies. Okay, I'm going to minimize myself so that we have the full screen. So word problems. So there's key words in word problems that can help us to know if we're going to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Here's just kind of a little bit of example. In all is a use for addition, left, or how, what's the difference that's used for subtraction. Twice or how many is used for multiplication. Division, half, average, or the word per, P-E-R is often used. Okay, so let's take a look at what examples we have. So first let's talk about checking for reasonableness. After you figure out the answer to a word problem, it's important to make sure that your answer seems reasonable. That way it helps you know if you're on the right track, if you pretty much got the right answer. Some things can be so off that you're like, oh, that can't possibly be the right answer. I must have made a mistake. So one way to check for reasonableness is to use estimation. So here's an example. John is hanging a picture. He wants to center it horizontally on the wall, going left or right. The picture is 32 and a half inches long, and the wall is 120 and three fourths inches long. So he wants to put it right in the center. How far from each edge of the wall should he place the picture? So he wants the picture centered, the center of the picture and the center of the wall to match up. So step one, these are, this will be our toolbox. Find the total length of the wall not covered by the picture. So how do you think we're going to do that? How can we find the part of the wall that's not going to be covered by the picture? Would that be adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Yeah, that should be subtracting, right? So we're going to subtract 120 and 3 fourths minus 32 and a half. Notice how our bottom numbers are different, so we have to have the same denominator before we can subtract. So we're going to multiply by 2, and that's going to give us 4. So if I multiply 2 times 2, I get my 4, and then I'm going to multiply the top number by 2 as well and get negative 2 fourths. And then I can just move my 3 fourths over, because that's already got a 4 on the bottom. And now I can subtract 3 fourths minus 2 fourths. What would that be? Remember, just subtract the numerators. Don't subtract the denominators. So it would be one, and then it would stay a four on the bottom. And the last part would be to subtract these whole numbers. So we have 120 minus 32, so we're gonna cross off the two, we're gonna borrow from the two, make the two a one, bring the one over here by the 10, or by the zero, now it's 10. So now it's 10 minus two is eight, and now we have one minus three, which we can't do, so we have to borrow from this one over here, so that one's going to become a zero, and then this one is now going to become 11 because we moved it over. So 11 minus 3, yep, 7, or 8, I'm sorry, 88 and 1 fourth. So that's how much wall so far we have. We're not done yet, right? That's just the first step. These are multi-step problems. So the length of the wall, not including the picture, is 88 and 1 fourth inches. Okay, step two. After you figure out the answer, it's important. Oh, I already read that. Okay, so go on. So now, step two. Divide the length of the wall 
not covered by the picture in half. So we're going to divide what's left of the wall and divide it by two because that's half. So divide 88 and 1 fourth divided by two is the same as we're going to change 88 four and 1 fourth into an improper fraction. Whole number times the bottom plus the top clap clap. Whole number times the bottom plus the top clap clap. So we did 88 times four plus one. So that came out to 253. And if you don't believe me, you could try it. You might as well try it just to make sure we know how to do it. 88 times four is four times eight is 32, but down the two carry the three. Four times eight is 32 plus three more, the three, three, four, 35. 352, and then we have to add one more. So that's where we get, oh, did I do that wrong? Four times eight is 32, carry the three. Four times eight is 32, plus three, three, four, 35. So it's three. See, it's a good thing I checked. So we had to add the one to it. So it's 353 divided by four. Now I wonder if all my problems, my numbers are gonna be off. Let me change this to 353. See what happens. And we're going to divide that by 2. Let's say 2 over 1. So now we use keep change flip. Keep the first fraction the way it is. Oh, see, it's right on this one. It was just a typo. And then change the division sign to multiplication. And then flip only the second fraction. Don't flip anything but the second one or you'll get it all wrong. Okay, and now we can multiply across the top. 353 times one and multiply across the bottom. Four times two or eight. And now what? Well, 353 goes on the inside. Eight goes on the outside. How many eights will go into 35? Well, four times eight is 32, five times eight is 40. That's too high, right? So four. And the four is gonna get put right over the five. Four times eight is 32. Now I subtract 35 minus 32. That will give me five minus two is three. These two would just turn out to be zero. Bring down the other three. And now I have to take eight into 33. Well, four times eight is 32, five times eight is 40, too high, so it has to be another four. So four times eight is 32, now I subtract and I get one. What do I do with the one? Well, I'm gonna bring it up, it's gonna become the numerator of my fraction, and the bottom number is just gonna stay what it was, an eight. So 44 and one eighth. Okay, so what did I just figure out? Well, I found the exact center of the wall part not covered by the picture. That's what I found. So 44 and 1 8 inches. Okay. So John should put the picture 44 and 1 8 inches from each edge of the wall. That's what that means. Clear my little three there. So the next step, ask, is my answer reasonable? Use estimation. How do we do that? Well, the wall is about 120 inches long. The picture is about 30 inches long. It doesn't have to be exact. We're trying to just see if we're reasonable answer here. So 120 minus the 30 gives us 90 inches of the wall left. Divide that by two. That would give us 45. Oops, I already told you, but let's see. Two into nine, if you don't know it, two into nine goes four times. Two times four is eight. Nine from eight is one. Bring down the zero. Two goes into 10 five times. Two times five is 10. 10 minus 10 is zero. Here's our 45. So 45 is the estimated answer. And what did we get for our actual answer? The picture should be placed about 45 inches from each edge. This is close to our actual answer of 44 and 1 8 inches. So our answer is reasonable. So that's why we use estimation to make sure we didn't make any mistakes. Okay, that one's a toughie. You do have a problem in your book like this one. So feel free to go back to the slides and look at them anytime. 
Okay, next, uh, next uh, word problem. One 30 minute TV program consists of three commercials. Each commercial is two and a half minutes long. In between the commercials, there are four equal length movie segments. How long is each movie segment? Okay, lots of numbers in this problem, right? So we have a TV program that's 30 minutes long. It has three commercials in it. And each commercial is two and a half minutes long. Okay, so three commercials, two and a half minutes long each. And in between these three commercials, there's four equal length movie segments. So they want to know how long is each movie segment. Okay, so step one, we're going to figure out the total amount of time for the commercials. How do we do that? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide. It's got the word total in it. So total can use the word adding or total can use the word multiplying. So we could add or we could multiply. Either one will work. I'm going to choose to multiply three commercials times two and a half minutes. So the length of each commercial, two and a half, times three commercials, number of commercials. So how do I do this? Well, I have to change my improper, I mean, I have to change my mixed number to an improper fraction, whole number times the bottom plus the top, two times two is four plus one is five, five over two, times three over one, I just put the three over a one because that doesn't change the number at all. And then I multiply across the top and across the bottom. Notice that I don't flip anything because I'm multiplying, I'm not dividing. On the last one we were dividing, so we flipped. Don't flip for multiplying. So five times three is 15 and two times one is two. And now I have to divide. 15 on the inside, two on the outside. How many twos go into 15? Mm -hmm. Seven, two times seven is 14. 15 minus 14 is one. I bring the one up to the top. Where'd it go? There it is. One, and then the bottom stays a two. So seven and one half is the amount of time, the amount of minutes for the commercials total. So the total commercial time is seven and a half minutes. Step one, okay? Gotta take these step by step. Okay, now we're on to step two. Subtract the total commercial time, which we just figured out, seven and a half minutes, from the movie time. How long is the movie? Which number in there is the movie time? Did you say 30 minutes? Well, okay. So the total length of the movie is 30 minutes. Total length of the commercials is seven and a half. What am I gonna be doing? Adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? Subtracting, right? Okay, so I have to borrow from the 30 because I can't take a half from nothing, right? So I borrow from the 30 and I make it a 29 and I bring one over to this side that I borrowed, but I rename it as two over two because one is the same as two over two. So now I'm able to subtract two over two minus one half. So I just put it underneath there just so it was underneath the same spot. So now two minus one is one, one half, and now I can do 29 minus seven. So that would give me 22. So the total length of the movie part is 22 and a half minutes. So that means that if you were to add the length of the movie plus the length of the commercials, we would get 30 minutes, right? So there's the total length of the movie. Okay, next step, divide the total movie time we decided it was 22 and a half minutes into how many segments? Four. Where did I get the four from the word problem? Four equal length movie segments. So 22 and a half divided by four. Now we have to use our keep change flip. So let's change 22 and a half into an improper fraction. So 22 times two is 44 plus one is 45. So 45 over two times well, well, we haven't got there yet. Divide by four over one, put the four over one. Now you flip. So that's 45 over two times one over four. And then we multiply across. We get 45 on the top and two times four is eight on the bottom. Now we divide. 45 divided by eight 
goes in there five times. Five times eight is 40. 45 minus 40 is five. What do I do with my remainder? I bring it up, make it the numerator. The bottom number stays an eight. So five and five eighths, eighths is the length of each movie segment. So there's our answer to our question. How long is each movie segment? Each movie segment is five and five eighths minutes long. Phew, right? And now we have to check for the reasonableness. Did we get the right answer? So let's say the total amount of time per, for commercials is about three minutes, right? Two and a half is close to three times the three commercials. So about nine minutes of commercial time. The length of the movie time is about 30 minus the nine minutes, about 21 minutes. And then we divide each movie segment is about 21 divided by four, which is about five minutes for each movie segment. And we got five and five eighths. So about five minutes is very close to the exact amount of five and five eighths. So the answer is reasonable. Okay, you get to try a couple word problems pretty much like these. So pause the video, do the problems on your Google form and then come back. Okay, hopefully you did that. And now we're on to the next, using rational numbers in different forms. Okay, sometimes in a single word problem, you have to use integers, positive and negative fractions, positive and negative decimals, phew. Okay, how is that gonna work? Well, Alana uses one and one fourth cups of flour for each batch of blueberry muffins she makes. She has a five pound bag of flour that costs $4.49 and contains 76 one fourth cup servings. So she has one fourth of a cup. She can pour 76 of those, okay? How many batches can Alana make if she uses all the flour? How much does the flour for one batch cost? So there's two questions in this word problem and there's a lot of information. So we're gonna break it down. So step one, we're gonna underline the numbers in the problem and underline the question. In this case, it's two questions, right? So let's underline all these numbers because there's a lot of them. And that number here, 76, that's written in words, isn't it? And then we would circle the problem. I just underlined them in green. I mean the question, I underlined the questions in green. Okay, you could circle them. Okay, step two, solve the word problem one step at a time. On the next page, we have more room. Step 2A, find how many cups of flour her five pound bag contains. How many cups of flour does her five pound bag contain? How are we gonna figure that out? Well, it tells you how many servings she gets, right? She gets a fourth cup serving. She gets how many of those? 76. So we're gonna have to do something with the number 76 and one fourth, those two numbers. So would we add them, subtract them, multiply them, or divide them? We have to come up with a total, right? So we're going to either add or multiply. I'm going to multiply 76 total cups in the bag times the size of the cups, one fourth of a cup, and I'm gonna multiply those two numbers. So what do I do? I am going to do uh, 76 times one on the top and then one times four on the bottom or 76 fourths. Now I have to divide, right? 76 on the inside, four on the outside. Now I can take the four into just the seven because it'll fit. So I'm gonna do that first. So four will go into seven one time. Four times one is four. Seven minus four is three. Bring down my six. How many fours in 36? Exactly nine. So four times nine is 36. 36 minus 36 is zero. So 19. How many cups of flour are in her five pound bag? 19 cups. So she has 19 cups in her bag of flour. Okay, that still doesn't get us to the answer yet, but it's getting us there. Okay, let's go on, new screen so we can 
a little more room again. To B, find how many batches Alana can make. That's the next, that's one of the questions, right? How many batches can Alana make if she uses all the flour? Okay, she needs one and a fourth cups for her batch, for each batch. We know that she's got 19 cups available. We figured that out in step 2A. And we're gonna divide that by one and a fourth cups. That's how much she needs for each batch of blueberry muffins. So how do we do that? Well, it's 19 divided by, change it to an improper fraction, whole number times the bottom plus the top, four plus one is five fourths. And now we use keep change flip. 19 stays the same, don't flip that one. Change the sign to multiplication, now flip the second one. Four over five. So now we're gonna multiply 19 times four on the top and one times five on the bottom. So what do we get when we multiply 19 times four? We get 76 and then we get the five on the bottom. We are not done, we have to divide. I know these problems are long, just stick with me. 76 on the inside, five on the outside. We can take the five into the seven one time. Five times one is five, seven minus five is two. Now we're gonna bring down the six. How many fives in 26? Well, five, right? So that gives us 25. Five times five is 25. Subtract, we get one. What do we do with our remainder? Bring it up to the top. Oh, in this case, what are we gonna do? Make it a decimal, okay. Why did I decide to do that? I guess because I know that it'll come out even. So I'm gonna put a decimal point in a zero and I can do that because 76 is the same as 76.0. And I could keep adding zeros if I wanted to. I'm not changing the number at all. 76.0000000 is the same as just 76. So now I'm going to bring down my zero. I've got to put the decimal up here too. Now I've got to bring down my zero. How many fives go into 10? Well, two, right? Two times five is 10. 10 minus 10 is zero. So what was the question we were trying to figure out? How many batches can Alana make if she uses all the flour? 15.2 batches, okay? But she can't make 0.2 of a batch, right? That doesn't make sense in the context of the problem. So she can make 15 batches and she'll have some of the flour left over, right? She'll have 0.2 or 2 tenths of the flour left over. But she can make 15 batches of the flour. That's the answer to the first question. Now, how much does the flour for one batch cost. Okay, let's figure that out. Last step, 2C, find out the cost of the flour per batch. Okay, it costs her $4.49 for the whole bag of flour, that's what the word problem says. We're gonna divide that by 15 batches. She can make 15 batches, we decided, right? So that's what we're doing. So how do we do that? Well, $4.49 goes on the inside, 15 goes on the outside. Right away, I'm gonna put my decimal right here, and then I'm gonna pretend like it's not even here. So I'm gonna take 15 into 44. So my, eight, my first number is gonna go right over the second four. How many 15s go into 44? Well, 15 times one is 15, 15 times two is 30, and 15 times three is 45. We're just a bit over with three. So only twice. So two times 15 is 30, we subtract. Four minus zero is four, four minus three is one, 14. Now we bring down our nine. How many 15s go into 149? Well, if I don't know off the top of my head, I can, on the side of my paper, multiply and try different things. So we could try, let's see. Uh, Let's try nine. Five times nine is 45, carry the four. Nine times one is nine, plus four is 13, 135. So it is nine. If I were to do 10, I'd be over, right? So nine. So we're gonna put the nine there. Trying to, my mouse isn't behaving. Okay, so there's the nine. 15 times nine, we just figured out was 135. We subtract the two and we get 14. Nine minus five is four. Or minus three is one. What do I do with that 14? 
Well, I could keep dividing and making it a decimal, or I could just make that into a fraction. So I'm going to make it a decimal. I'm going to add a zero. I don't have to add the point because the point's already there over here, right? So I just add a zero. You can add all the zeros you want at the end of a number. So let's bring that zero down. And now we got 140. How many 15s go into 140? Well, probably, I don't know. Let's try. Let's try four. Let's see what we get. Four times five is 20. Carry the two. Now that's only 60. Um, let's see if we get an answer. Nine? Oh yeah, yeah, because 135. Yeah, nine times 15 was 135. Duh, that's my problem. Okay, so now we take 135, we subtract, we get five. We could keep going, couldn't we? We could put another zero and keep going, should we? No. The flour to make one batch costs about 30 cents. Where did I get the 30 from? I rounded 0.29. This is 0.29 cents. So I rounded the two up to a three. So about 30 cents. That's how much it costs. So we've answered all the two questions in the problem. We finished. Yay, that was a toughie. You're going to have one to try like that. OK, let's see. Now we got to check for the reasonableness of our answer. Okay, a bag of flour contains about 80, one fourth cups. Where'd I get 80 from? 76, I rounded it up to 80. One fourth cups of flour, which is about 20 cups, because 80 divided by four is 20 cups. Each batch uses about one cup of flour. Where'd I get that? Well, I dropped the one fourth, and I just said it's about one cup. So there is enough for about 20 batches. A bag of flour costs about $5. I rounded this $4.49 up to $5. So I divide $5 by 20 batches, and that's 25 cents per batch. What was our real answer? 30 cents per batch. So we are real close to our actual. So the actual answer were 15 batches costing 30 cents per batch. Our estimates are close, so we um, have done it correctly. Okay, next problem. Oh, we get to do sugar. A four pound bag of sugar contains 454 one teaspoon servings and costs $3.49. A batch of muffins uses three fourths cup of sugar. How many batches can you make if you use all the sugar? What is the cost of sugar for each batch? And then in parentheses, one cup is equal to 48 teaspoons. So it's exactly like the other problem, only using sugar and teaspoons and stuff like that. So step one, underline all the numbers in the problem. So we got a lot of them again, so let's underline. Four pound bag, 454 one teaspoon servings, $3.49, three fourths cup of sugar. And then I'm underlining the question, how many batches can you make if you use all the sugar? What is the cost of sugar for each batch? Okay, all right. Next page. Solve the word problem one step at a time. 2A, change three fourths of a cup into a decimal. Why did I do that? It's going to make it easier. Okay, what is three fourths as a decimal? You should memorize this. Three divided by four. It's 0.75. So memorize that. Okay, I'll show you how that works. Three divided by four, put a decimal point, put a zero. The decimal point up ahead, up above. Four goes into 37 times. Four times seven is 28. 30 minus 28 is two. Add another zero and bring it down. Four goes into 25 times. Four times five is 20. 20 minus 20 is zero. There's my 0.75, okay? So three fourths of a cup is equal to 0.75 cups. 0.75, 75 hundredths of a cup. Okay, let's go on to the next step. 2B, figure out how many teaspoons of sugar are in three-fourths of a cup by setting up a proportion. We'll learn more about that soon. Okay, 0.75 cups equals how many teaspoons? We don't know, right? So we're going to set that equal to, we know that one cup is equal to 48 teaspoons. How do I know that? It's in my word problem. They told me right here. So one cup. So notice how I, and this is important because you're going to be learning this pretty soon. One cup, the two, the two cups are on the top, and the two teaspoon amounts are on the bottom. 
okay? So you gotta keep those parallel, cups on top, teaspoons on bottom, or whatever the unit is. The same units have to be in the same spot, okay? So now that we did that, we are going to cross multiply 0.75 times 48 and then divide by the number that we haven't used. So 0.75 times 48 divided by one. And that'll be easy to divide by one, right? It just doesn't do it. So we just have to multiply 0.75 by 48. So there's 0.75 times 48. So five times eight is 40, put down the zero, carry the four. Eight times seven is 56 plus four, 60. Now we do the same with the four times five. We gotta start from the second number under the four, right? Four times five is 20, put down the zero, carry the two. Four times seven is 28 plus two, 29, 30. Now we add zero, zero, six, three, 3,600. What did we just figure out? Right, how many teaspoons of sugar are in a three-fourths of a cup? Okay, oh, I forgot the decimal there. So don't forget, there's a decimal in this number, so we have to put a decimal. So it's really 36, not 3,600. That's un unreasonable anyway. So 36 is how many teaspoons will fit. Um, so there'll be 36 teaspoons of sugar needed for each batch. Why? Because um, each batch of muffins uses three-fourths of a cup of sugar, or 0.75, and we're using our ratio proportion there. One cup is equal to 48 teaspoons. So we need 36 teaspoons of sugar. Keep on a going. Stick with me. 2C, figure out how many batches can be made using 36 teaspoons in a 454 teaspoon bag, because it tells us that there's 454 teaspoons in the whole bag. How do we do this? Add, subtract, multiply, or divide? I hope you said divide. So total teaspoons in the bag divided by 36 teaspoons for each batch. Let's do the work over here. 454 divided by 36. We're going to take 36 into 45 and start our answer over the 5. 36 times 1 is 36. 45 minus 36 is going to give us 9. We're going to bring down the 4. How many 36 is in 94? If you don't know, you can do multiplication on the side of your paper. So 2. So 2 times 36 is going to give us 72. So 94 minus 72 is going to give us 22 left. Okay, put our decimal point in. So bring our zero, put our decimal point above, bring our zero down. How many 36s in 220? Ah, right? That's what you're probably saying. So let's try trial and error. 36 times, I don't know, let's try five. Five times six is 30, carry the three. 3 times 5 is 15, 16, 17, 18. That's 180. That's a little low. So it's going to be higher than 5, so maybe it's 6. So then on your paper, you would try 36 times 6. Okay, 6 times 6 is 36. Put down the 6, carry the 3. 3 times 6 is 18, 19, 20, 21. That's 216. That's probably as close as we're going to get, so 6. So my computer should pop that up there. 6 times 36 was 216 down here. We subtract, we get 4. So you can make about, uh, you can make 0.6, oh, I'm sorry. You cannot make 0.6 of a batch, right? That's not a full batch. So you can make about 12 batches. 12 batches can be made with the sugar. Okay, now we got to figure out the cost. So we know that we can make 12 batches. So $3.49 for the cost of the sugar divided by 12 batches equals, well, here we do the work again. We're gonna put our decimal up there right away. Now we're gonna say, pretend it's not there. We're gonna do 12 into 34. Well, that's gonna be two, right? Two times 12 is 24, subtract. We get 10, bring down the nine. How many 12s go into nine? 109, I should say. 12 times 9 is 108. We subtract, we get 1. So we're going to put a 0 there, bring that down. How many 12s go into 10? None. So we put a 0. 12 times 0 is 0. 10 minus 0 is 10. 
So the cost per batch is 29 cents. So about the same as our last problem, right? For all that work. So we now know we can make 12 batches of sugar, I mean of muffins, that cost 29 cents a batch. Check for reasonableness. So three fourths of a cup is about one cup. One cup is equal to about 50 teaspoons. Where do I get that? I get that from this 48 here, making it rounded up to 50. So there is about 50 teaspoons in one batch of muffins. There are about 450 one teaspoon servings in a four pound bag, divided by 50 teaspoons per batch. That's about nine batches. The cost for a bag of sugar is about $3.50. I got that from up here around it. Divided by the nine batches, that's about 38 cents a batch. So the actual answer was 12 batches at 29 cents. So our estimates of nine batches and 38 cents is pretty close to our actual answer. So our answer is reasonable. Okay, now you get to try problems just like this. Good luck. Okay, welcome back. Now we're gonna use some tools strategically. There are many tools to help you solve word problems. These include rulers, drawing models. I like to draw, that's my favorite. Using a calculator, protractors, and computers. Okay, here's a new one. The depth of Golden Trout Lake has been decreasing in recent years. Two years ago, the depth, the depth of the lake was 186.73 meters, two years ago. Since then, the depth has been changing at an average rate of negative one and three-fourths inches per year. The negative means the depth has been going down, not as deep anymore. What is the depth of the lake today, two years later? Okay, step one, underline all the numbers in the problem. Got a lot of numbers, and then we underline the question. The question is usually the last sentence of the word problem. What is the depth of the lake today? Okay. Step two, solve it one step at a time. 2A, change the percent to a decimal. We're going to be learning a lot more about that soon. So negative one and three fourths to a decimal is going to be changed by negative 1.75. That negative is really far away from the number. It's three fourths we decided before was 0.75. So one and three fourths is 1.75. So it's negative 1.75%. To change a percent to a decimal, you move the decimal two places to the left. So if you move this decimal one, two places, maybe I'll draw that. One, two places left. And then we fill in with a zero. So it's a 0 0.0175. So let me undo that because I think it's going to pop up for us. Oh, see, I even did it on the computer. Look at me. Okay, so it's 0 0.0175, and the little decimal is going to go away there. So now that is now our decimal. We changed our percent to a decimal, negative. Remember, it's going down. Okay, there's our decimal. Now, what do we do? Well, we multiply the decimal by the beginning lake depth. The beginning lake depth was 186.73. Beginning lake depth times negative 0 0.0175, the percent decrease every year. Subtract the two numbers, oh no, multiply the two numbers. So when we multiply, we pretend like the decimal isn't there until the end, and then we put it back in. So the year one decrease in depth is negative 3.27. What you have to do on this problem, you just, oh, I didn't need that to come out quickly, but you would multiply five times three, five times seven, five times six, five times eight, five times one. And you multiply seven times three, seven times seven, seven times six, seven times eight, seven times one. Then you multiply one times three, one times seven, one times six, one times eight, one times one. And then the last row would just be all zeros because everything zero times every number is going to be zero. And then you'd add those up, and that's where I got the negative 3.27. So that's the year one decrease. The first year the lake depth decreased 3.27 meters. Huh. Okay, now. Subtract the decrease from the beginning lake depth. I remember doing this last year. Everybody was looking at me with big bubble eyes like, oh, how do we do this? Okay, 
186.73 is the beginning lake depth. Year one decrease was 3.27 uh, meters. So we subtract and we get 183.46 meters. That's the depth at the beginning of year two. Now, we have to multiply that by the percent decrease. We already know that, we figured it out as a decimal. What was it? 0 0.0175, right? So this is the beginning year two depth, multiply. Oh, we got to subtract it from the rate of decrease. Huh? Oh, we had to multiply it. I'm sorry. The rate of that's not the rate of decrease. That is the depth. So that's wrong. Depth decrease in depth year two. That's not right. Okay, so this whole problem is wrong at this point because this should have been the percent should have been multiplied here. So I'm going to just say, forget it, okay, at this point. We can do it in class or on Zoom. Because now my problem, my numbers are all going to be off. So there's the beginning lake, lake depth, year two decrease, which is wrong. So ignore that. So, okay. Anyways, we'll skip that one. Is our answer reasonable? No. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. Um, maybe I did do it right. I might have. I don't know. I'm all confusing myself now. Okay, I went back because here's what I did. The answer is right, and so I was wondering why. Right? Did I press play again? Yeah. Okay, so this is the beginning depth at year two. Then what I did is I multiplied that on my calculator by 0 0.0175. So that's what I did. I multiplied, I must have got tired of doing steps, so I stopped and I just hit the step and just put the answer. So I'm, I'm multiplying, not that, I'm multiplying 183.46 times 0 0.0175. And I did that on my calculator and just now I did. And I got 3.21. So that's what I got. So that's my decrease, 3.2 or 3.27, I should say. 3.27 was my rate of decrease, okay? That's how much I lost in year two. And I, it shouldn't be a times, it should be a subtraction. So um, 3.21. Yeah, I think what I did is, you know what I did? I just figured it out now. What I did is I, cross this whole thing off. I multiplied by point zero one seven five. I just forgot to change the number. Get rid of this. Annoying. Okay, and then if I multiply this whole thing out, I get negative 3.21. Phew. Okay. And then click, click, click. Then I subtract that 3.21 from the beginning of year two step. And I get the depth at the end of year two, 180.25, phew. So at the end of year two, the lake had a depth of 180.25 meters. Yes. Okay. So that was the depth of the lake at the, um, up today, because that was two years back. So then this is the reasonableness. The water depth decreases about 2% per year which is 0 0.02 as a decimal. The lake started at about 200 meters. Where did I get 200? I just took 186.73 and rounded it to 200 times the 0 0.02. That gave me four meters decreasing per year one. 200 minus four meters is 196 meters at the beginning of year two. Then I took 196 times 0 0.02, the rate of decrease, about the rate of decrease. That gave me about 3.8 meter decrease in year two. And then you can't see because the black bar is on the bottom there. There it is, 196 minus 3.8 gives me 192.2 meters at the end of year two. Yay. So at the end of year two, the lake had about a depth of 192.2, which is close to the actual depth we got of 180.25. So our answer is reasonable. Okay. Hopefully you follow all that. If not, go back and look at the slides. Sorry for the uh, mistake on the slides.
Okay, let's try another one similar. Three years ago, Jolene bought $750 worth of stock in a software company. Since then, the value of her purchase has been increasing at an average rate of 12 and three fifths percent per year. How much is the stock worth now? Same kind of problem. So underline all the numbers in the problem. Underline the question. Okay, what's the first step? Change the percent to a decimal, 12 and three fifths percent. How do we do that? Well, it's 12.6. How did I do that? I divided the three by five and that gave me 0.6. So that's where I got 12.6. Now to change a percent to a decimal, move the decimal two places to the left. So that's gonna go one, two. That will do it, one, two. So my decimal is gonna go right there and it's gonna move there. I don't know what those boxes are. So now we have 0.126. Now we're going to multiply $750, our beginning stock value, times our rate of increase, not decrease, 0.126. Multiply that, I get $94.50. That is the year, I'm going to erase this. That is the year one increase in stock, $94. So I have $750 plus, we're going to add $94.50 to the stock. So let's add that. Where's my little line that I had there? So add that value, $94.50. That gives us $844.50. That's how much the stock is worth at the beginning of year two. Okay. So how many years went by? Three years. We gotta do this three times. Okay, so $844.50 times our rate, 0.126. It gives us an increase of $106.41 by year two. See how much more it increased? So then we're gonna add that to the beginning balance of 844. Add $106.41. That gives us a new value of $950.91. Now we have to do this one more time. Beginning balance is now going to be the new $950.91. That's our beginning balance. We're going to multiply it by our rate, 0.126. That's going to give us our increase at year three, $119.81. We're going to add that to the $950. And let's do that and then we'll have our answer. 950 plus $119.81, $1,070.72. That is the stock value at the end of year three. Shoot, that was a whopper. I remember that being a whopper last year too for the kiddos. Okay, so at the end of year three, the stock value was $1,070.72. Now we're going to check the reasonableness. Is it reasonable? Well, the stock value increased about 10%, which is 0 0.10 as a decimal. The stock value started at $800 times 0 0.10, which is $80 increase in year one. Year two, 80 plus 80, 800 plus 80 is $880 at year two. Beginning of year two was about 900 times 0 0.1, so about a $90 increase. I just changed this 880 to 900 just an estimate. So year two is 900 plus 90, which is $990 at the beginning of year three. And finally, the stock value at the beginning of year three was about a thousand. I took this $990 and rounded, rounded it up to a thousand, multiplied by 0 0.10, that $100 increase. And finally, $1,000 plus 100 is $1,100 value at the end of year three. So it was reasonable, it was close to what we got. Okay, I'm gonna give you a chance to try at least one of these problems. So just stick with me, don't, um, don't not try it, okay? Just give it a try. Okay, on Google Classroom, you have your homework and I'm gonna stop and I hope you have a good day. And if you have any questions, these are tough questions today for your homework. The word problems are not easy, they're multiple steps like I was doing. So just do your best and we'll go over it in Zoom or in class. See you. Bye.